No need to waste your time. I know you're on your grind. Let's go through some of the Eastern Conference All-Star Reserves for the 2022 All-Star Game from Cleveland. So I have some opinions. I have a couple of gripes with this list. Remember, this is voted in by the head coaches. I'll get into that in a second. Let's get through the no-brainers, and then I'll give you guys a little bit of my thoughts. And please drop yours in the comment section on the Eastern Conference All-Star Reserves. Let's start with one of the obvious no-brainers. James Harden is an All-Star, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to the bearded one. His 10th All-Star appearance. Dude's averaging 22.5 points, 8 rebounds, and 10.2 assists per game this season for the Brooklyn Nets. Congratulations to Harden. He will be joined by Zach Levine. Congrats to Zach making his second All-Star appearance representing them Chicago Bulls. Zach is averaging pretty much 25 points a game, 4.8 rebounds a game, and 4.3 assists. He and DeMar DeRozan have been spectacular. Uh, let's keep it moving, making his third NBA All-Star appearance. It's none other than Chris Middleton, representing the, the defending NBA champion Milwaukee Bucks. Man, this dude has exceeded every expectation for him coming out of Texas A&M as the 39th pick back in 2012. Averaging 19.6 points per game this re season, 5.6 rebounds, 5.2 assists. A lot of times he's the Bucks closer. For me, Chris Middleton was a no-brainer as an all-star selection. Congratulations to Darius Garland making his first NBA all-star appearance. We knew the Cleveland Cavaliers would get one guy. We didn't know if it would be Darius or would it be uh, Jared Allen. It's Garland. Fifth pick out of Vanderbilt in the 2019 draft. He's averaging 19.8 points per game this year, 3.3 rebounds and 8.2 assists. The Cavaliers have withstood injuries to Colin Sexton, also Ricky Rubio, and they're right still in the thick of things, chasing a number one seed out east. Congratulations to Darius Garland. Now here are some of the more debatable ones. Jimmy Butler will be making his sixth NBA All-Star appearance representing the Miami Heat, who I believe when the coaches voted for this, the Heat were number one in the East. It's been really, you know, every day in the Eastern Conference, it feels like we get a new number one. So I just wanted to put that out there. I believe when this voting took place, I think Miami was number one in the East. They're number two right now. Uh, Butler's averaging 21.8 points per game, 6.3 rebounds a game, 6.4 assists for Miami this season. I'll get into Butler more in a second. I do have a gripe there. Jason Tatum's making his third NBA All-Star appearance out of Boston. Jason, the points are there. He's averaging 25.9 a game, 8.4 rebounds, and 4.1 assists per game. And, and last but not least, congratulations, making his first NBA All-Star appearance like Darius Garland will be Fred Van Vliet of the Toronto Raptors, undrafted. Love those stories, by the way. Out of Wichita State in 2016, uh, Fred Van Vliet is averaging 21.5 points per game this year, 4.7 rebounds per game, seven assists for Toronto this year. And I do think it's worth noting, Toronto ain't even had fans for the most part over the last few weeks, and the Raptors have started to get it together. They look like somewhat of the team we saw a couple years ago that were able to add Kawhi Leonard to that bunch and compete for a championship. So congratulations to all those gentlemen on making the 2022 NBA All-Star Game. Now, time to give y'all some of my gripes. Number one, the one that stands out to me the most, I'm gonna be real with you guys, I don't believe Jimmy Butler should have made the NBA All-Star Game. Look, Butler has been great, but when he's out there, yeah, that's the thing, he's missed a significant amount of time. If you're asking me, yo, how could you have the Miami Heat as a top four seed? Number one, when the coaches did the voting and they did not get anybody in the game. I understand how, how confusing and conflicted this could be. But to be real, if the Heat were going to get any player in the game, it really should have been their coach, Eric Spolster, who's done a phenomenal job coaching this team up through all the injuries that they've had. I would have even been cool with Tyler Hero getting the nod. Butler has been his normal great self, but it, to me, it hadn't been all-star level for enough of the games for Miami. They've won even when Butler's been out. They made their push when Butler was out. Sorry, I'm having a hard time putting Butler in over a couple guys that I got here. I'll get to those guys in a second, but I want to talk about one other gentleman that I'm kind of iffy about. I'm cool with Jason Tatum making the game, but here's my thing. At some point, there needs to be expectations put on this Boston Celtics team. You see, they didn't get two guys this year. They had got Jalen Brown in, you know, as of recent with Tatum. Boston doesn't get two guys. If they continue to underwhelm regular season after regular season, 
a conversation might need to be had. Do they deserve any guys? Tatum can put up points, but my thing is, yo, points ain't enough. Like, if your team's losing significant amount of games year in and year out, at some point we got to question these quote-unquote all-stars and ask, where is the defense? Again, Tatum, I'm fine with him making it. He's what would have been one of my question marks. I'm fine with Fred Van Fleet making the game. Fine with it. Pascal Siakam has been pretty darn good this year, but Van Vliet has been their guy more times than not. Fine with him. If if not for Jimmy Butler making the game, I would have rolled with LaMelo Ball or Miles Bridges. I would have rolled with one of the two. Um, you know, you can make a case for both. Miles is having a breakout year. He's in the most improved player of the year conversation. To me, though, LaMelo is the guy that makes that ship go, meaning if Bridges was removed from Charlotte, I think LaMelo would still be able to get a, a, a pretty decent product on the court out of what's left in, in Charlotte. If LaMelo wasn't on Charlotte, yeah, I don't believe the, the, the Hornets would have won 20 games so far this year. I do believe that. And, you know, that's where I'm at with it. I probably would have rolled with LaMelo Ball as the all-star reserve over Jimmy Butler. Again, I know, I know, I know. How do you justify the Hornets, who are sixth or seventh seed out east right now, getting a guy in over the Miami Heat? who are number one, number two out east. My thing is, yo, if you just watch the games and if you watch the product, a lot of times Butler hadn't played. It truly has been a collaborative effort for Pat Riley and Eric Spolster's Miami Heat team this year. They just get different guys from Martin that stepped up, Vincent has stepped up. Every given night, somebody else can step up. Duncan Robinson's had some big games. Tyler Hero's having a, a, a bounce back year. For me, I would have been comfortable with Heat getting nobody in. And, um, and, and, and putting in LaMelo Ball over Jimmy Butler. That's my opinion. Please let me know yours. What do you think of the Eastern Conference Reserves? This ain't an egregious list. I think they got it right for the most part. You know, like it, This ain't one of the years where it's like, bruh, they messed up here, 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 and there. And then oftentimes, you know, knock on wood, I don't want anybody to get injured. But oftentimes, these things kind of work themselves off. Maybe LaMelo or Miles will get the call in a couple of days. They probably canceled each other out, if you want to be real about it. You know, they're both having really good years. They probably canceled each other out from the vote standpoint. And that's how we got with the Hornets getting no guys in. But we'll see what happens. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Listen in the comment box below. Your Eastern Conference All-Star Reserves. Remember, these teams are going to get shuffled in together and we're going to pick some players. LeBron's going to pick for his team. And I don't know if KD's going to still do it because I don't think Durant's playing in the game. So maybe Giannis will do it. We'll see.